I've driven cars faster than it, but with that being said, there is nothing that is quite a Hellcat. If you want to be the fastest on a track, on a drag strip, you don't buy a Hellcat. If you want to be the fastest on a turning track, you don't buy a Hellcat. If you want to be the fastest in a roll race, I'd make the argument that you could use a Hellcat, but there are better platforms. But all I can say is none of those cars are a Hellcat. And if you've driven a Hellcat, if you've seen a Hellcat, you know what I mean. In today's video, we're going to go ahead and take the Hellcat out for a spin. This is the first video I'm actually going to be doing with the Hellcat since I revealed it to you guys. I'm going to kind of talk about my first impressions with the car and um, how it kind of compares to my RT, how it feels to somebody who's never owned a car like supercharged before, let alone one with 700 horsepower. We're going to do a quick POV drive. I have to go get gas, you know, life of a Hellcat owner, get gas all the time. Let's get in the Hellcat, fire it up, go for a drive. Um, last time I did a POV drive, my camera was kind of high up and I apologize for that. Somebody left like a really nasty comment about it, like demanding that I change my POV. I'll try to make it a little better for this video. So let's talk about what it's like to drive this Hellcat after I stop sweating my ass off right now. Uh, one of the tough things about doing a POV drive is that I'm six foot five and my seat is all the way down. So I literally can't get any lower in this car, which is why uh, sometimes my POV view is not, not the best in terms of making these videos. So a Hellcat coming from a cammed RT, um, the Hellcat is obviously a much faster car like if i get on it in this car like it still kind of scares me to drive it it'll break loose at higher speeds um, it just pulls way harder up top because you know it's making 200 more horsepower so obviously if your goal is to just go super fast and you know be the big dog on the street um this this is the car um it, it is uh scary fast um, when you get on it. Um, it breaks loose everywhere, even with 305s, like those don't really help that much when you're when you're trying to launch this thing. I don't even bother trying to launch it from a dig. My RT can't launch from a dig on street tires and I figure this can't either. I'm too afraid to put drag radials on this because um, right now I don't have a one piece drive shaft. It just has stock axle, stock drive shaft and I'm afraid that I'll turn the drive shaft into a torpedo. Even if I take this to a track when it's bone stock, it's probably gonna be on the street tires, which I know is not the best thing since street tires can sometimes Sometimes mess with the track prep but I'm afraid I'm gonna blow something up or, or break something so of course driving this car this thing's completely bone stock the the iconic thing is that supercharger wine that's probably my favorite part about this car being of course faster is is really cool but uh, just the theater of this car is also really fun. With that being said, the stock exhaust is completely, it, it is weak compared to my RT. Like wide open throttle in the RT sounds way better than this car, um, but that's to be expected. And I actually, I already have plans to modify some of those things on, on this car. I ordered up some components for the exhaust. Um, so hopefully, hopefully those things come in soon. One thing that's weird about this car is just how much low end it has that my RT doesn't have. So as you guys know, the RT's cammed. I've said it a million times as an excuse for losing races that um, <laughs> my RT lost a ton of low end with the cam, which is why I ordered that torque converter for it. And um, you know, this, the Hellcat with that root style supercharger, the low end is like 10 times uh, more aggressive.
Um, one thing that sucks is even though my RT is on E85, it's getting better MPG than the Hellcat is. And that's probably because the Hellcat's new and I'm romping on it more. But E85 is, you know, like 60% of the price of 91 and I'm getting better MPG in the RT with E85, which has less energy per unit volume and burns faster and blah, blah, blah. So um, do not buy a Hellcat if you're driving it every day. Thankfully, I don't have to drive either of those cars to work. And so the gas price doesn't really bother me too much. They're almost both purely fun cars. Let's see, 82 bucks. Ain't the worst thing in the world. Gas prices have gone down. Yes, sir. One of my favorite things about the car is of course the SRT drive modes. Um, driving in sport is my favorite because the, the suspension isn't jolting. Um, one thing that's really nice about this car is the shifts are just way more crisp in this 8HP90 than my 8HP70 in the Charger. And of course that's because the transmission is stronger, it's built to handle an engine that puts out more power, um, and it, it just feels much more responsive. Um, the 8HP70, which is a really good transmission, don't get me wrong, um, it, it feels slushy compared to the 8HP90. The Hellcat, if I'm paddle shifting at like partial throttle, like. Like, oh look, I'll be driving my mom around and her, it's like I'm driving a manual car with how hard it's jolting her between shifts. Like, it's actually a really aggressive, I really like it. Track's a little too aggressive. Sport, I've found, is a good middle ground. It's definitely capable of getting you in a lot of trouble. Um, as a bone stock car. Like for a bone stock car, I don't know that there are many options better than this uh, for just being like balls to the wall, just ridiculously unnecessary muscle car. That's what this car is great at. It is unapologetic. It uses technology that's pretty much from the 60s. And it is like the pinnacle of American muscle car. And that is something that I, I just, in my opinion, other cars don't offer. And that's what this car is. Like everybody knows what a Hellcat is and it's and it's really cool to, to have that connection with people. With that being said, it can be really nerve wracking driving these even around town to, to, to park at a mall and go inside for a couple hours, right? Because these are also like one of the most stolen cars. Um, and I'll be, you know, I'll be sitting at a restaurant eating with my friends, right? And I'll, I'll, I'll see the car parked outside. I park kind of far away from people because I don't want door ding. I'll see somebody like driving slow in front of the car, sometimes taking pictures. And I know, you know, 90% of the time it's somebody who just loves cars. They love seeing a Hellcat. You know, these cars, while they're common, they're not super common because they're starting to be, you know, priced out of like reasonable range for a vehicle, especially a Dodge. Like people love the car, but deep, deep down I start to get worried. Like, is that person scoping out the car to steal the damn thing? I don't drive it as much as you think I would because I'm kind of afraid to. One of my favorite parts of this car as well is, is those downshifts, bro. Like, it just downshifts way snappier than my RT. The shifts are more aggressive, both, both up and down, as well as um, just, just the shift timing is way quicker. I just realized that there's a cop behind me and I'm downshifting over here like a dummy, but he's passing me, so we're okay. <laughs> Oops. So yeah, those are kind of my first impressions driving a Hellcat. It's not like my first time driving a Hellcat, so it's, it's not the same exact thrill of sitting behind it for the first time, and I know that makes me kind of, pri that sounds super privileged, and I, I recognize that it kind of is, but I've driven cars faster than it, but with that being said, there is nothing that is quite a Hellcat. My my friend who actually sold me this car has a Model S Plaid. He also let me drive that car. He, he was like, we took it in a canyon. It's not a canyon car because it's de it's kind of a brick. We took it through a canyon. There was some straightaway parts and he let me just punch it. He let me do whatever I wanted in the Plaid. And the Plaid was ridiculously fast. It was way faster than the Hellcat from a dig for sure. It's probably even faster from a roll race. But 
it doesn't have the heart that these Hellcats have. It doesn't have the sound, it doesn't have the adrenaline, it doesn't have the thrill, right? If you want to be the fastest on a track, on a drag strip, you don't buy a Hellcat. If you want to be the fastest on a turning track, you don't buy a Hellcat. If you want to be the fastest in a roll race, I'd make the argument that you could use a Hellcat, but there are better platforms, like you could, you know, twin turbo a 10 speed, top end them reliably in a 10 speed. But all I can say is none of those cars are a Hellcat. And if you've driven a Hellcat, if you've seen a Hellcat, you know what I mean. Anyways, we're back home now. Um, it's cooled down a little bit. Hellcat's right there. RT's right in front of me. That pretty much concludes this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Click that like button below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like I said before, I'm very thankful for your guys' continued support. More Hellcat stuff coming soon. And uh, I will see you guys in the next video.